everyone. Welcome to part one of the August overview. Thank you so much for joining me. Now I'm just going to get stuck right into Aries Moon and before I do that I'm actually just going to check. Yes, we are recording the sound. That's always a good thing. Okay, Aries Moon. Aries Moon, welcome. Welcome to your reading, your mini reading. Let's take a look at what's happening for you this month, the month of August. So it looks to me like, yeah, okay, so the sun is going to move on August 17th from your fourth house to the fifth house. What are we looking at there? Basically, the sun is not particularly thrilled to be in either house, I'm afraid. Um, and what this could, how this could translate is you know, and nothing major, I, I'm not seeing anything major here, but just kind of mild tensions, worries, um, you know, seniors may question you at work, that's when the sun's in the fourth house, it moves into the fifth, you know, that'll be a time to avoid arguments, and that'll definitely be a time to look after your health. Um, but you've got Mercury's looking quite good for you, Venus have a look at Venus. Venus, yeah, Venus isn't particularly in the best of places either, but let's take a look at Mercury because Mercury is in a good place for you. Mercury is retrograde all month just about um, until September 2nd. Well, Mercury steps out of, I'm just going to check this actually, when does he move forward? Transit charts. Apologies for doing this live, Aries Moon. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, Mercury goes forward August 19th in the sidereal Vedic system. Okay, so I'm actually going to make a little note of that so that I've got it August. 19th he moves forward now this thing about um you know retrograde and all that kind of thing i don't particularly think it affects people too adversely or too severely i think we're, we're, people are very quick to blame the planets but i don't particularly think that a retrograde planet is a bad thing very often it's giving you more power Remember, it's just closer to the Earth, and the Earth is moving faster than that planet. That's all that's happening. There's Nobody's going backwards or any of that. Everybody's always going forwards all the time. So a retrograde planet actually gives you more power. And I think we need to rethink what a retrograde planet is. I know there's a famous astrologer who always says a retrograde planet, you revise, you review, you renegotiate, you recheck things. He says you do all the re-things. I think that's quite true. I like that. I like that, you know, he's asking people to be more thorough. If there is some kind of superstition around a retrograde planet that it might be causing some problem. But through my study of astrology uh, and, and, and how I've been taught and, and how I've looked at things, I'm really seeing that a retrograde planet is just a lot more powerful. It's closer to the Earth, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. So August 19th, we've got... Just write that down. Sorry, I'm kind of taking up a little bit of your time, Aries Moon, in order to get things perfect for all the other signs. But there you go. Um, Mercury retrograde. Let's take a look, Aries Moon, at what's going on with your Mercury. So... Oh, I did write that it goes forward August 19th. Okay, new opportunities, income, boost your income, great for education, great for property, absolutely. Mercury likes being here and Mercury is going to help you. This is one of Mercury's more favorable spots. So for you, really, this is one of your best planets to tune into. This is the planet that's going to give you uh, Definitely growth, definitely growth in terms of finances and education. Any property deals that you have to do, definitely do them now. Uh, now is a good time for the month of August, that is. So, and whether or not Mercury is going 
forward or backwards, I don't think that makes too much difference. But if you are a little bit superstitious, then remember all the re-things, re-check, renegotiate, revise, review, anything to do with re-re-re, that's, that's what you want to be doing there. Let's take a look at your Venus. So Venus um, will spend all month in your sixth house until September the 2nd. This is not a great placement for Venus. I'm just going to say that straight up. Venus isn't thrilled to be in the sixth house. Um, there can be arguments, uh, you know, issues with health potentially. It's not a great time to travel. There are a few things to be cautious of around here with Venus, but it depends on your personal chart. It depends how strong Venus is for you. Perhaps Venus isn't a big player in, in your chart. In some charts, like the chart that I'm reading uh, today, and I'm going to be recording, doing my recording for that person maybe tomorrow or the day after, um, yeah, Venus is a strong player in that person's chart. So, you know, um, it, it does depend for you how things are placed and how things look. Now Jupiter, as you know, is in your seventh house and what I'm doing for the slower moving planets this time, last time we looked at Saturn, so this time I thought we'd check in with Rahu Ketu and we're checking in with Jupiter as well. Now Jupiter, as we know, is in your seventh house and we've basically looked at these in previous months. Because these are such long transits, they take months and months before they move or do something a bit different. I thought it would be really cool for me to shake up the format a bit and do something a bit different this month. So instead of me just telling you what Jupiter is doing, I'm going to ask you to ponder a question that will help you tune into Jupiter's energy this month. How about that for a change? So Jupiter in the seventh house, what is your question to ponder? Your question is, if you could create a new income stream, what would it be? And that is something that you can just take with you and after this video, really have a think about it. Really slow down, create some space in your mind, create some space in your day and just go, yeah, if I could create a new income stream, what would it be? What would I do? And it's just something to ask the mind. And you can just ask the mind and let the mind bring you an answer. Who knows, it might bring you a brand new income stream. You know, uh, you might be doing something and then you might think to yourself, hmm, I could monetize that. Like just all of a sudden, you know. Um, but with Jupiter in this seventh house position, there might be some support in that regard. You know, um, he might help you expand a potential new income stream. So that's something for you to ponder there. Let's check in with Rahu Ketu. Again, I'm going to ask you a question for each planet that will help you tune in to the energy of that planet. So Rahu, your question to ponder for Rahu energy is, if you could take up some form of spiritual practice, what would it be? So that's Rahu in your fourth house. If you could take up some form of spiritual practice, what would it be? Right? something to ponder, something to think about. Perhaps you're reflecting on a spiritual practice that you already do every day. But if you could improve that or if you could shake it up a bit, make it more interesting, or if you could, what can you do? What can you do around spiritual practices? It's just something to think about, right? And it's no coincidence that you've come to this video and you're being asked these questions. Have a think. Now your Ketu question to ponder is, if you could organize your finances for long-term security, how would you do it? So that's a big question. That is really something to think about. And it's probably something that you've already got worked out, but it's always good to reflect on these things a little bit more. And maybe for some reason, you need to be thinking about these things. And with these planets in these positions, now's the time to be thinking about some of this stuff. So I hope you like that new format. Let me know in the comments below if you like the question session. But I think it's quite cool because I've kind of, in past months, we've gone through what these planets are doing and I don't want it to get repetitive every single time. I want to keep things fresh and interesting. So that was your overview Aries moon. 
Apologies, it took a bit longer. We're going to jump into Taurus Moon. Welcome, Taurus Moon. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, we're going to take a look at your sun. We're going to take a look at Mercury and we're going to take a look at Venus. And then for your slower moving planetary energies, we're going to do something a little bit different this month. So you'll see what I mean. Okay, sun, August 17th, shifts from your third house to the fourth house. Now, when the sun is in your third house up until August 17, this is looking quite good. This is looking like progress on the professional front. You're going to be valued. You're going to be respected. You're going to be noticed. You're going to be appreciated. This is really good. When the sun shifts into the fourth house, though, he's not so happy there. So potential tensions or worries, nothing major, but just a little bit. Uh, and seniors at work may question what you do or your customers if you're self-employed might be just a little bit more critical than usual so that's just something to watch out for there mercury is in retrograde and will be in retrograde until august 19th he moves forward but for the whole month he's staying in your third house now taurus moon people if you have felt low in energy if you've felt tired if you I'm feeling depleted for any reason uh, and I can definitely relate to some of that <laughs> I can really relate to some of that if you watch my overview I probably talked about it there um, yeah I mean this could be why you know it could be due to your mercury it's not a great time for travel uh, you know this is the time to watch your relationship your close relationships with people around you so your spouse your co-workers just go easy you know, and just recognize and realize that, do you know what, I'm not really energetic, so I'm going to let go, and I'm not going to try and be the life of the party, and I'm not going to try and be all things to all people, I'm just going to let go, and if I need to go home early, I'm going to go home early, right, sometimes we need to do that, okay, sometimes we just need to let go, go home, and put on our comfy slippers, and make some delicious something or other that we like eating, and I know that's what I enjoy doing. <laughs> a night in on the couch is always a good thing. Let's have a look at Venus. What's Venus doing? Are you getting any love from somewhere in this chart? And yes, you are. Venus is looking good. So all month, Venus is in your fifth house until September the 2nd. So if you've got children, wonderful. You know, this is a time to enjoy with your children. You know, this is a time to take time off work if you can. Just be with your kids and enjoy life a bit. Uh, if you're studying, if you're a student, good time for exam success, good time to, to be studying and doing all that kind of thing. Um, Venus is also going to make you look extra attractive. Lucky you, Taurus Moon. Uh, so you're going to be extra attractive. Your social scene will be really good and great time for singles to get out and mingle. You know my little phrase there. Jupiter. Now let's take a look at Jupiter and Rahu Ketu. Okay, so what am I doing for the later part of this? Now, each month I try and mix it up a little bit when I'm talking through the slower moving planets. And this month is no exception. I'm going to do these questions for you to ponder because these planets have been in this, these positions for so long and I don't want it to get repetitive. I want this to be interesting and fresh and each month I'm going to try and do something a little bit different. So this month... I'm doing something different. I'm asking you a question. So Jupiter is in your sixth house. So the question for you to ponder is, if you could cut down on expenses, where would you start? Right? Just something to ponder. Perhaps that's something you've already been doing or dealing with or, but hey, maybe this is something to think about. And with Jupiter in the sixth house, you may experience some help. In that area okay that's why I have this question because Jupiter might be able to help you achieve um, a cutting down of expenditure especially like um, cutting down debt would be a really good thing let's take a look at Rahu Rahu in the third house so your question to ponder is if you could put your effort into building something what would feel worthwhile that's an interesting question. So Rahu in the position of the third house has energy, okay? He wants to create things. He wants to build things. He wants to, you can work with your hands. You could create something. You could start a business. You could pick up a hobby. You could do something you've always wanted to do. You could paint. You could 
perhaps there's a wall in your living room and you think, do you know what, I, I want to paint this. I want to paint vibrant colours and be creative and I want to do something different. So if you could put your effort into building something, what would feel worthwhile? Okay, that's your Rahu question. And your Ketu question, Ketu is in the ninth house. Ketu question to ponder. So if you could travel or do a spiritual trip somewhere, where would you go? I love that question. Where would you go? And, you know, I've been seeing some photos on my friend's Facebook and I've been seeing, oh, my God, look at all these beautiful places where they're going. And I've got some places where I would absolutely love to go. So do ponder these questions because the planets are going to help you achieve some of these things. All right. Well, it's been lovely chatting, Taurus Moon. Now we're going to step into Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Now we're going to go through your Sun, Mercury and Venus. And then for your slower moving planets, we're going to do something a little bit different this month. So I hope you like what I've got in store. Okay, now Sun on August 17th is shifting from your second house to the third house. What does this mean? Um, I mean, there could be some financial hurdles. It's really a time to be careful of what you say. And... You know, it's not all bad uh, because when sun shifts into the third house, sun really likes being in the third house. So you are going to experience some progress on the professional front, which is fantastic. And you're likely to be noticed, to be valued, to be respected, hopefully to be honoured or rewarded in some way for some of you. That would be amazing. Mercury is in retrograde and uh, will spend all month in the second house. Mercury will go forward on August the 19th. So whether Mercury is forward or retrograde, I don't think it matters too much. Um, some people have suspicions around a retrograde Mercury, but I don't. I, what I tend to see is that it's a more powerful Mercury so because it's closer to the Earth. And the, the thing is, when it's in retrograde, it's just that we're moving faster. So, you know, that can mean different things for different people. But... Um, I certainly don't harbour too many suspicions, uh, superstitions around that. Not suspicions. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. Um, it's good. This is really good. Good for income. Appreciation from co-workers. Good for learning. And your communication could be a source of profit. I mean, with Mercury in the second house, sure. Who knows? Maybe some of you are voiceover artists. That would be. This would be an amazing time for you if, if you are. Um, to have this kind of, of Mercury. This is great. Oh, you've got a beautiful Venus. Let's take a look at this. Venus all month in your fourth house till September the 2nd. This is beautiful. So it's a good time to accumulate wealth. Uh, good time to do property deals. Uh, name and fame, you'll be recognized. Happiness with family. Great. Good times on the domestic front. All of that. It's really nice. So let's take a look at your slower moving planets. Now we're going to look at Jupiter and we're going to look at Rahu and Ketu. I think last time we did Jupiter and we did Saturn. This time I'm going to do Rahu Ketu. Because these guys have been in the same spot for months and months and months, I don't want to get this to get boring or repetitive or like you keep hearing the same thing again and again. So I'm shaking it up. This time we're going to do a question per planet. So I'm actually going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you something to ponder and you can have a think about it and you can reflect on it. And as you reflect on it, Hopefully the planets will give you energy or answers or you'll be working with the planets. So let's have a look at how this works. Jupiter in your fifth house. So the question for you to ponder is how well do you receive love and how do you give love to those around you? Now that's a big question, right? But with Jupiter in the fifth house, this is really a time to be receiving big love. And it's also very much a time to be giving big love, okay? So this is these are philosophical questions. These are things that you meditate on. These are things you reflect on that you think about. So do you think about how well do you receive love? How well do you give love to people in your world? It's a really big, beautiful question. I know I've reflected on it uh, a lot in my life, definitely. Rahu Ketu. Rahu in your second house, Ketu in your eighth house. So the Rahu question to ponder, how are you managing your health and how are you managing your wealth? Huge question again. I mean, look at this, Gemini, I mean, you're dealing with love, 
you're dealing with your health and your wealth and how you manage those and what daily routines are you building into your life that are going to help you capitalize on both your health and your wealth because remember your health is your wealth if you're a really healthy person you'll be able to go out there and make money okay so these things are really interconnected and Rahu is getting you to look at this in your life so that's the big question to ponder there let's take a look at the Ketu question to ponder um, are you carving time out of your busy schedule to go within and when I talk about going within I mean in a spiritual sense are you getting time to be alone and you know are you getting time to find your own answers you know you're going to need that you're going to need some stillness in your life Gemini moon and I imagine with a Gemini moon you're a very chatty person and uh, you know and the mind would be active and busy so you really do need to find some quiet time so maybe Ketu will help you to achieve that this month going forward all right Gemini moon it's been lovely uh, but I'm gonna have to step into Cancer moon Cancer moon welcome thank you so much for joining me now let's take a look at your fast moving planets and then we're going to take a look at your slower moving planets this time for your slower moving planets I've got something a little bit different in store for you so stick with me and we'll take a look now the sun on August the 17th is shifting from your first house to the second house so this would be I mean you want to be careful with your health really uh, up until August 17th you want to be able to rest and relax whenever you can and the sun is not too thrilled to be in the second house that could bring financial hurdles and I mean definitely yeah, be careful with what you say as well uh, that's going to be important there mercury is in retrograde mercury all month will be in your first house till september the 2nd and mercury is moving forward august 19th so okay yeah th this is a little bit stressful potentially uh not hugely stressful everything is mild you know if i ever talk about stress it's probably going to be mild stress i, I never have anything um too stressful to predict uh you know i, I never see anything because life is quite good on the whole really you know what i mean um so unless of course you're going through a tough time in which case you're very welcome to get in touch <laughs> but um i mean we're having a look at mercury here and yeah look it, it, it's not terrific bit of stress financial financially uh finances could dip um travel not a great time to travel and you want to be careful with people around you just be a little bit careful with people around you. Don't be suspicious, but just, you know, be a little bit more aware, a bit more heightened awareness with people around you. Uh, Venus all month is in your third house until September the 2nd. So this is good. Oh, this is good. I'm so glad. This is, um, you're going to, you can, yeah, you can expect gains from friends. Uh, courage should be at an all-time high, hopefully definitely venus is giving you that energy anyway the sun might be depleting it but <laughs> venus is giving it to you so tune into venus uh good luck is yours if you think about it if you you know what's the phrase energy goes where attention something grows where attention goes energy something i don't know too late in the evening it really is getting on actually my goodness it's late at night yes that's that's what's going on there okay cancer moon i am gonna shuffle along uh good time with siblings friends status power creativity hobbies basically all the lovely third house things are yours to enjoy due to venus energy and that is wonderful you're one of the lucky planets that's getting a good venus transit so enjoy that cancer moon i'm really happy about that so as we can see it's a little bit of a mixed bag with your faster moving planets let's take a look at your slower moving planets now we've already gone through jupiter in the fourth house we've already gone through rahu ketu in the first and seventh last time i think i did saturn this time we're going to do rahu ketu axis each time i'm going to do something a bit different to keep it interesting and this time uh this is interactive you're actually 
Apologies Cancer Moon, it just cut out as it seems to do at about the 24 minute mark. I suppose it's good, that, that way I know uh, that I'm talking too much. <laughs> right, so it cut out at the point where I was just about to ask you your questions. Now what are these questions? So I've gone through Sun, Mercury, Venus, your faster moving planets, and now we're going to step into Jupiter. And last time I touched on Saturn, so this time I thought we'd look at Rahu Ketu axis. Now because these planets spend many months in these areas, you know, I've kind of already talked about what's going on there. So how I thought I could make it interesting is I could ask you a question. So it's interactive. So I'm going to get you to do some thinking and that way you will interact with the energy of these planets directly. So let's take a look at Jupiter in the fourth house. Your question to ponder is, what are your long-term plans regarding property? Okay, so think long-term, you know, and you might be really young watching this channel. And I know there are some very young people who watch this channel. Um, you know, you might be in your mid-teens, early teens, late teens, right? And you're not really buying property. That's okay. You can still think about it. You can still think, gosh, I'd love to live in a great big house with a huge garden right by the ocean. You know what I mean? This is a time to think about long-term plans regarding property. I knew, for example, as a young person, when I was very young, in my teenage years, I knew that I was going to live in a foreign country. And I was already living in a foreign country, really. I mean, I was born in Australia, but, you know, um, people would always ask where I was from. So I'm a foreigner wherever I am. Um, and I knew that from Australia, I thought, yeah, I'll definitely move to maybe the USA or England. I knew I would go somewhere. I knew that. Uh, and that's in my chart. That's in my stars indicate that as well. Uh, so, you know, this is really a time to ponder. What are your long-term plans regarding property, regarding where you live? Okay, let's have a look at Rahu Ketu. So Rahu is in your first house. So your Rahu question to ponder is, what can you do to save money? Or earn more money or add income streams to what you do so how can you add an income stream to what you do right so let's say I mean you're working in a really busy office job you're there every day you're working five or six days a week you're working really hard you know I mean how can you add an income stream to that and it could be starting a YouTube channel and talking about astrology I don't know. Um, I, I actually don't earn any money from this channel, but apparently like I have to get a thousand subscribers or something and then maybe I might be able to earn like, you know, a couple of, what is it, a couple of US dollars per 10,000 views or something like that. I don't know. But with Rahu in the first house, I've got this question here that, you know, ponder what can you do to save money, to earn more think about additional income streams and your Ketu question to ponder is how can you build more relaxation into your day that's a really nice question that's a really nice thing to ponder I think we all need to do that and one of the examples that I've got written here is um, yeah this this was an example I gave to a friend of mine recently one of my friends she's having quite a bit of trouble at work she is working constantly and the people are extremely demanding and it's really really tough and I was saying to her she was saying that oh it's so difficult because it takes me at least an hour to an hour and a half to get home and I said to her well actually that's a really good thing because when I used to work in London now I work from home a lot but when I used to work in London every day I loved having a long journey home and why did I love having that one hour travel time or one and a half hours sometimes uh, one place was two hours each way and why did I love the long journey I loved the long journey because it enabled me to deposit my negative energy into the train tracks because it was a nice long train ride so I would just visualize and picture all of my stress and all of my negative energy going into the train tracks and I'm just dropping it and letting it go letting it go letting it go 
So sometimes I would hop on my phone and I'd have like an audio book to listen to or I'd have music to listen to or I'd um, read magazines and read articles. I used to read fun stuff on, on my phone. So I used to do that. And I definitely used to spend some time just visualizing. I'm dropping all my negative energy. And I loved having a long journey because it was during that long journey I felt like I was physically going away from the workplace. I was physically leaving the office. I was physically leaving all the stress behind. So that by the time when I would walk into my apartment, you know, I'd put the key in, I'd open the door and I'd just be like, oh, I'm in my sanctuary. I did not bring any of that stress into my beautiful sanctuary. No way. Um, you know, my home is my sacred space and it's like, you know, I left it all in London and then I would come. I live in greater London, you know, I'm kind of on the edges of, of London here. And yeah, I mean, I, I um, so this question, Cancer Moon, how can you build relaxation into your day? That's just one example, you know, that you deposit the stress of your work into the journey as you go home. And then by the time you get home, you are entering your sanctuary, you're entering your sacred, beautiful space. So that's just one idea there. Uh, apologies for the camera messing up in the middle of your thingy. Sorry about that. I really have to get a new camera. I, one day I will. <laughs> um, but thanks for stopping by Cancer Moon and we're going to hop into Leo Moon. So Leo Moon, welcome. Welcome to your mini report. Now we're going to take a look at your fast moving planets, we're going to look at your sun, Mercury, Venus, and then we're going to take a look at your slower moving planets. And when we get into your slower moving planets, we're shaking it up, we're doing something a little bit different there, so it's something a bit exciting. Hope you like what I've got in store for you. Uh, we'll take a look at your sun. So on August 17th, your sun will shift from this 12th house to the 1st house. And what's this looking like? Okay, so this is not ideal. The sun's not too thrilled to be in either of these places. Um, good, you've got a good Venus, uh, Mercury, yeah. Okay, so you do have some good news here. I'm happy about that. But yeah, sun's not giving you the best of news. Um, you know, there could be some financial issues, mild financial issues, you know, higher expenses, that kind of thing. Uh, sleeplessness, possibly bit of stress possibly you're not the only one who's going through energy drain by the way there are quite a few signs this time around who are going through that um, this is a time to be careful with your health this is a time to rest and relax whenever you can so if you are not feeling like being the life and soul of the party which at a Leo moon I'm sure occasionally you might feel like just going home and putting your feet up and uh, not not necessarily being at all the parties so that's something that the sun might be encouraging you to do let's take a look at your mercury mercury is in retrograde and mercury will for the whole month be in your 12th house until september the 2nd mercury goes forward august 19th okay uh, let's take a look at mercury mercury's not thrilled to be here um you know a dip in your health dip in energy dip in your wealth quite possibly uh, you know you may have to confront people around you there could be arguments not a great time with your spouse potentially although we're getting to Venus Venus has some good news so hang in there so some of you might be experiencing you know if you've got the stronger mercury or you know that this might affect certain people more than others uh, it depends on your particular chart so uh, but I'm giving all the all the options here. Travel, not a great time to travel, um, but it's a terrific time for your spirituality, right? Terrific time to be reading some really good books, listening to good audio books, watching videos like this, watching other videos about astrology or spirituality or anything that's soothing and relaxing and something that you enjoy. So... Um, this is a good time for that sort of activity but then we get to Venus and here we come to the good news and I'm so happy for you you've got a lot of good news here and I've got no time to go shopping so lucky you um, if you're into gemstones if you're into beautiful things then now might be a time to 
split a little bit. I uh, don't know how thrilled the sun will be with that because I just said that the sun's experiencing some financial issues. But if you have, <laughs> you know, um, a bit of spare money, say for example, uh, you might be able to indulge in a little something here and there. It's a good time to spend with your family. It's a really good time to just chill out with friends. And it's summertime here in the Northern Hemisphere. It's a great time for festivals, great time for music. Uh, I've also got a note here, great time for love affairs. Sure, <laughs> why not? Um, love affairs with the one sweetheart that you love, obviously, not with someone else's sweetheart, remember that. Um, singles get out and mingle, all that kind of stuff. So Venus is happy, so that's great. I think when Venus is happy, everybody's happy, right? Uh, Jupiter is in your third house and Rahu K to axis 12th and 6th house. Okay, so when we do the slower moving planets, last time we did a Saturn check-in, so I try to mix it up each time. This time I'm going to bring Rahu K to in. We're not going to do Saturn because, you know, we've done Saturn a couple of times. To make this a bit interesting every month, I don't want to just repeat the same thing every month. And because these guys have been in the same spot month after month, I wanted to mix it up, I wanted to shake it up, I wanted to do something a bit different. So what I thought I would do is I would ask you a question in regards to each planet and you, as you ponder this question, you can work with the energy of that planet, hopefully some answers will come into you. So let's see how we go with this. So Jupiter is in your third house and the question that I would want you to ponder is if you could put your effort into any business venture, what would it be? Right. So if you could start a business, any kind of business, a little side business, a little, you know, they, so you work your nine to five job, but you work your five to nine business, you know, uh, what would that be? Your after hours business or perhaps your main business, your passion in life. You know, if you're in a job that you're not thrilled about, if you're doing something that, you know, as they say, a lot of people say this, a lot of coach type people say this, is it juicing you? Which I think is a pretty cute phrase. It's a little bit cheesy, but I'm going to use it. Go on, why not? I've, I've brought it out. So is it juicing you, right? Is it exciting you? Is it something you want to do? So what would your business venture be? If you could put your effort, right? What would you want to get out of bed and do? What do you really want to do? What are the things that you do anyway? For me, astrology has been something that I do anyway. You know, even when I was working full time and I was I was always looking up people's charts always for years I've been doing this so um and I used to look up people's charts in the western system all the time so and I was just doing that because I love it all uh, right let's have a look at Rahu Ketu questions so Rahu is in your 12th house the Rahu question to ponder is what spiritual lessons have you learnt from money and your career to date well, that's an interesting question. What spiritual lessons have you learnt from money? Yeah, that's an interesting one, right? Exchange. And if it's not money, think about energetic exchange, okay? That works too. You know, the give and take that you have in relationships. How is that working out for you? Are you always giving and are you never receiving? It's really something to think about. Um and your career and you know what spiritual lessons have you learned from your career and I mean career is a really good one I, I've read an article today that was about women who keep picking up the tasks that no one else wants to do and I thought and it said something about women don't do that if you're in an office you shouldn't do that and I thought god yeah I wish I'd have read this article 10 years ago because I know I've been at fault of doing that I, I, I kind of made a career out of doing the work that no one wants to do in advertising because I would take up all the challenging boring clients that no one would want to do I would work on all the tech brands and all the banking clients and all the um the non-glamorous accounts but you know I do have stars for that and I do have a mind that likes that kind of thing so it wasn't all martyrdom or any of that so no one should feel sorry for me anyway this is your question to answer what spiritual lessons have you learned from money and your career to date and your key to question to ponder is what concrete steps can you take to expand your career or business same for health what habits or routine can you build in to boost 
your health. I've got your health and business. So, okay, these, these are quite a couple of questions here. I really should have spent some more time writing this. But, I mean, look, the question is about career. It's your wealth and your health, okay? So what steps can you take to expand your career or your business? And what habits or routine can you build in now to boost your health? Your health is your wealth, right? So the two really go hand in hand. So this is something you really need to think about with Rahu Ketu this this time. Your health and your wealth, what does that mean to you? How does that work in your world? Uh, I know for me, my health is getting more attention than anything these days. And it's given me permission to be tired for once in my life, you know. Um, and I'm kind of experiencing what that is and it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting, you know. I like being busy, but yeah, how do we handle, you know, when things get a bit quiet? That's something you might want to ponder. But for you, Leo Moon, it's all about your health and wealth. Think about the two together and think about how you are with each and how, how is your health, your wealth? I think that is the question for you, your Ketu question. So you've got quite a lot to ponder there, Leo Moon, and I hope you enjoy thinking about all those things in a meditative way. And as you meditate and ponder these questions, hopefully you'll work with that planet in finding some answers, right? Hopefully they'll deliver some downloads into your mind. So it's been lovely catching up, Leo Moon. Now we're going to meet Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, I'm going to go through your fast-moving planets and then we're going to have a look at your slow-moving planets and we're going to do something a bit different when I get into your slower moving planets so stay tuned for that right your faster moving planets we're going to look at the sun mercury and venus so the sun august 17th shifts from your 11th house to the 12th house now the sun's been having a terrific time in your 11th house it's really good for gains it's good for travel it's good for appreciation from your boss but when he shifts into the 12th house, he's not so thrilled to be there. Uh, I will tell you that. So there could be some very mild financial issues, nothing major, but, you know, just kind of um, higher expenses or that kind of thing. And you could also be experiencing a bit of sleeplessness, a bit of stress quite possibly. Uh, but let's take a look. Mercury is all month in your 11th house till September the 2nd. And Mercury moves forward August 19th fantastic okay this is a really good time oh look at that your mercury and venus are in terrific okay great let's not worry about the sun just don't tune into the sun it's all about mercury and venus for you this month virgo moon i think you had a good time last month too didn't you virgo moon i think i was raving about you last time well i'm still raving about you because mercury is very happy because he's retrograde he's spending a lot of time in that 11th house yes I remember now so you've got a boost to income good time with siblings good time with friends you could discover a new hidden talent wonderful uh, you could be devising multiple income sources how fantastic is that I'd love some multiple income sources when you figure it out just tell me all right <laughs> um, Venus all month in your first house until September 2nd Venus loves being here so it's a great time great time socially uh, great time for growth in business, great time with your partner, great time with your business partner, great time for your health as well. Your self-esteem should be high, um, great time to be with your partner, great time to attract a partner, okay, if you are looking to meet someone. This is a good time, so singles, get out and mingle. Uh, it's a lovely time. This is really good. So, I mean, I'm hoping that your son doesn't affect you too much. Let's take a look at your slower moving planets. Now this month, because we've had a look at Jupiter in, you know, he spent months in this area and Rahu Ketu spent months in this area and will spend many more months in this area. Last time we did Saturn, so I thought we won't do Saturn this time. I thought we'd do Jupiter and Rahu Ketu. What I'm going to do is so that these don't keep getting repetitive and boring um, is I'm going to ask you a question for each planet. And then as you ponder and meditate on these questions, perhaps you'll work with the energy of that planet in order to get a download, in order to get 
some answers, you know. So let's take a look at the Jupiter question to ponder. So Jupiter in your second house, the question to ponder is, if you could do something to improve your intuition, what would it be? Oh, that's a fun one. I love that. And I've given some examples here. There's meditation, there's painting, there's creativity. Um, so the question again, let's hear it again. If you could do something to improve your intuition, what would it be? I really like that. I'm always kind of doing things with my intuition. One of the things I do to get into a bit of a zone is I'll put an audio on, like a lecture of some kind. So I might listen to Sadhguru, I might listen to Alan Watts, I might listen to um, Ram Das, I might listen to Eckhart Tolle, I might listen to, God, who else do I listen to? Joe Dispenza at the moment, he's a favourite of mine. So I listen to all these different people and then I make jewellery. I make something with my hands or, you know, I'm painting. I really can't paint. But I try, you know, and, and I do something with my hands and I find that with that balance of kind of the mind being engaged and you're mercurial, I think you'll like this Virgo moon. It's like you're kind of engaging the mind in two slightly different ways and there's this nice gap that emerges and it's really amazing and, and the right things sink in. It's quite incredible. So explore, experiment, try different things, uh, see what works for you, what times work for you. Are you a morning person? Are you a night person? All these things. If, and if you could do something to improve your intuition, what would it be? Okay, let's take a look at your Rahu question to ponder. So Rahu's in your 11th house. Okay, here's your question. If you came into lots of money, how would you invest it? That's a good one. I like that. How would you invest it? And, you know, I sometimes fantasize about that. I sometimes think, well, gosh, if I was like a gazillionaire, I'd be into property. You know, I, I don't really like stocks. It doesn't share market, all that. It doesn't interest me. You know, I like property. And, and it, for me, that's not a headache. For some people, managing properties and all that, that's a headache. They'd much rather just invest in shares or something like that. I think property would be so exciting, you know. And, like, I'd buy them all just local to where I live, and that way I could check in on people and make sure everyone's happy and wow but yeah I'm definitely not in that position <laughs> but I think about it because I want to be ready in case that happens do you know what I mean and that's why I've put this question here for you because with Rahu in the 11th house there's going to be a part of you that's pursuing gains okay there's going to be a part of you that's not satisfied with life as it is and you want to pursue more gains and you're like I'm tired of this, I just want to have lots of money and I want to do life differently. Exactly. So if you came into lots of money, how would you invest it? How would you manage it? What are your plans around that? Because the more you think about these things and the more detail, the more you can colour that in and draw in all the detail, then the energy just kind of has to, it'll happen. You know what I mean? Like if you visualise it in a lot of detail, and you really get knowledgeable about what it is that you want, it can, it can manifest for you easily. And Joe Dispenza is one to watch for that stuff. And he's got some lovely things. You can search him talking about um, how to manifest in 5D and things like that. Wonderful talks. So do check him out. All right, what's your K2 question to ponder? Okay, if you could change your day in some small way to lessen mental stress, what would you do? And the example that I'm going to give here is an example that I gave a couple of signs ago. I can't remember who I gave it for. See that? It just happened like 20 minutes ago and I've forgotten. Um, but I gave the example of a friend of mine who she said that, oh, you know, I live an hour from work. She said, and after a long day of work, I can't stand it. She said, um, I really hate that long one hour journey home. And me, I've, when I've worked in London, I've had a one-hour journey home. Sometimes I've had a one-and-a-half-hour journey home. At one place I worked, I worked in Slough one time. I had a two-hour journey home. Two hours there, two hours home. It was nuts. I actually really like the long journey. And I'll tell you why. I like the long journey because I was able to kind of deposit the stress of my day, like, into the train tracks. Like, I would allow 
the train tracks to kind of absorb my stress. I used to visualize it sometimes and I used to visualize that the train or sometimes I visualize that the train is moving and I'm leaving all of that energy in the city. And then I loved having a long train ride home because I'm going away from all that stress. And then when I get to my home, when I put the key in the door and I open the door to my home, I feel clean. I feel like and I don't want to dirty my home with work energy and work stress. I truly leave it behind. I got very good at doing that. Sorry about that Virgo moon. It just got cut. The camera seems to be doing that on a regular basis now. So really sorry that it got cut. But basically, I think I was just talking you through that last Katie question. If you could change your day in some small way to lessen mental stress, what would you do? And I think I was giving you an example of when I would leave work on my long journey home, I would leave the stress in London and the train would take me home and I would leave the stress there or I would visualize myself depositing the stress on the train tracks so that by the time I got home, I just felt like I'd left work really far away and I was ready to enjoy my small apartment, which is my little sanctuary. So Vego Moon, I hope this is a really good month for you. And with all that Mercury and Venus energy, and you know Mercury and Venus, they're friends, they get together, they love each other. They kind of, I always see them as artists. Definitely when they're in a chart and they're together, how close are they together? Well, they're not so close together, but they're close enough. And, uh, you know, yeah. I mean, you could find a new hidden talent with Mercury there. So maybe your inner artist will come and shine. Uh, this month come out and shine so Virgo Moon thank you so much for watching and yeah I will see you next time